and welcome to this episode of the forum. My name is Scott Haslam and I'm your Vice President of the Leeds Number One Amalgamate Branch of the Communication Workers Union. Our videos include trade union related interviews, tutorials and news like this one. So if this is your first time watching or haven't already, please consider subscribing and hit the bell symbol to be notified when we upload future videos. 17 like 4 million people voted to come out. Yeah. I don't feel that people have been represented by any political party in this country, including yourselves. As regards the argument that it would only a 4% swing, 52 48 percent out. We as a, de a democratic union we do everything by ballots and elections. When Dave took over from Billy Hayes, at the right time, Billy as good as he was, he'd become yesterday's man, he won on the strength of the election. Nobody at that point, I can't remember how close it was, probably wasn't really close, but nobody at that point, who were on Billy's side, and had voted for Billy, turned around and said, well, well, we're not happy with that, we'll have another different way. There's another general election, and hopefully Jeremy does get in. If it's a 4% swing, I'm sure you won't be asking for another election because it was so close. I just feel if I don't get this overturned, whether you're ever a Remainer or a Bratchity, we will be going to well in a cap and cat. And I tell you now, it's only a couple of years ago since three of your colleagues were murdered, butchered in Jonesbury by a right wing lunatic. Right, and you mentioned Tommy Robinson this morning, and I tell you what, if it gets overturned and it goes other way, you're going to see a massive rise of all the right, far right lunatic groups. And I tell you what, that's going to be a concern for everybody in this room. They're talking about public don't understand what they voted for. What a great gross insult to people in this country. I knew exactly what we voted for, or thought I did, because it said on that ballot paper. Do you want to come out of Europe? And that's all it said. And that's what I want. Deal or no deal. I want out. I just think it's a tragedy and a travesty that 650 of you lot in Parliament, excuse my French, you can't agree on the colour of that excrement. It's ridiculous. Get it sorted. Get, it, what, get out what people voted for. Sorry, I bet you don't put that on your agenda. Richard, no thanks for that. I said that the referendum should be accepted and respected. I believe that because the country voted to leave the European Union, we should uh, leave the European Union. So uh, the Labour Party is a democratic socialist party. As Democrats, we accept and respect the outcome of that vote, even though the Labour Party mm -hmm. campaigned to remain in reform. Uh, but as socialists, we won't accept Brexit being used by the Tories to reduce workers' rights, reduce environmental protections, reduce consumer protections, <coughs> or turn our country into a free market tax haven uh, off the coast of Europe, or get into bed with the kind of vision that Donald Trump and others have for our uh, NHS. So I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think I was saying the things that maybe you disagree well, with. Look, I know I'm ugly, but I'm deep in it with a daft stick, right? What you said, you said one of the things that incensed me, you said you mentioned stopping in a customs union. Everybody knows you can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it. You're either in or you're out. You can't be out of Europe. If you stop it, it well, if, 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 if we're out of the European Union, we have to have some kind of relationship with the European Union. <coughs> the European Union will still exist. We will still trade with countries that are in, but in the European Union. The reason for a customs union, not the customs, but a customs union with the entity that is the European Union that we would be outside, is to avoid, for example, a 10% tariff on goods. I'm worried that a 10% tariff uh, on goods will in, will mean job losses in this country. That's not what we want. So I believe because the country voted to leave the European Union, we should leave the European Union. But I don't know about you. I when Theresa May says her deal will mean it's fine for workers' rights, I don't trust the Tories on workers' rights. When the Tories say this deal won't open up our national health service to privatisation and these American <coughs> companies coming to get their hands on it, these corporations, I don't trust 
trust them when they say that. I but do. That's now. I, I, I do trust the Tories, however, to despise communication workers union members, and I do trust the Tories to try and use this as another excuse, a smokescreen, to attack uh, the conditions uh, of working people. So I understand your frustration, but that's the point that I'm making in a way. I'm saying we shouldn't be seeking to be a party that just um, just pursues the very understandable concerns of those who voted Remain. We should also be alert to the very real concerns of people who voted Leave as well and try and bring people together around what you could call a traditional British compromise that understands the problems faced by both communities that voted Leave and communities that voted Remain. But the truth is uh, that we can't trust the Tories on, on any of these things. The Tories can't be given uh, a, a blank check and, and no deal. And no deal means leaving with no arrangements whatsoever with the rest of the, those countries in Europe. And that's not going to be good for our economy. Some kind of arrangement is needed. I'm not calling for a second referendum, by the way, but I'm saying a second referendum, as per the policy that's passed at Labour Party conference, uh, could become something that has to happen, depending on how things move uh, in the next few in the next few weeks. But I agree with the point that you made, by the way, that if there were a second referendum, that we'd have to be very concerned about how this could uh, assist the far right to argue that democracy right. isn't being uh, pursued and that democracy isn't being uh, respected. And I do believe, by the way, and Dan Abbott has said this, that if there were a second referendum tomorrow, I, I mean literally tomorrow, I probably think that Leave uh, would win that. So people need to be careful uh, what they uh, wish for. I think there would be a real risk, judge, listening to what people <coughs> say, that people would vote for a no deal Brexit, not necessarily understanding all the implications of a no-deal Brexit as opposed to a Brexit with a sensible arrangement with the European Union that we lead to best protect the economy, best protect workers' rights and best protect the environment. I mean, I, I totally respect Richard's position, but I have to say I totally disagree with it too. And, uh, you know, when we, we have a vote for action, but then when we get the deal, we have a vote on the deal to see what we've got. And the fact is, Right, that people did not vote, even the 52% did not vote for a hard Brexit. They voted to leave the European Union. Andy made points relating to these, so he kind of put a different perspective uh, to you and, made, and he made some good points, although I'm not calling for a second referendum. Council for Numpontifract voted 68.9% <coughs> to leave. Yet the MP for Castle for Numpontifract put an amendment in for a Brexit that kept us. In the, in the market. Why is she not representing the people who have elected her and put her in that position? Uh, Steve was talking about the motion about Article 50, weren't you? Yvette Cooper's motion about Article 50. Uh, we're relaxed about an, a short extension of Article 50 because that seems necessary. If, for example, Article 50 has to be extended to the end of June <laughs> in order to sort out this mess and get a deal to leave, then uh, I think that's, uh, that's, that's fine. The problem is we've got Theresa May trying to hold the country to ransom on this, saying accept her hopeless deal or crush out on a no deal Brexit. What I, what I would say is that I think an extension of Article 50 by a matter of weeks from the end of March to the end of June to get a proper deal, because Parliament can't agree on a deal at the moment, uh, well, I don't think that's unreasonable by the way. An, an extension an extension of a, of a few weeks, if we're using the trade union analogy, if the union asks for a few more weeks to negotiate with an employer, for example, I don't think that would be viewed as unreasonable. So, Do you think it's not reasonable when they've got less than two years? Well, they've made a mess of it. It's the, government that's been, it's the government that's been negotiating it. And whatever people's views are on Brexit, and I respect people's views on Brexit on both sides of the argument. I don't... I don't trust the Conservatives. We've got to understand that the Conservatives have been negotiating this. So I don't think we can be blaming the opposition for the mess the Conservatives uh, have made of it. It's very important to tell you that we've got a number of Labour MPs and Tories now have come out of their respective parties and they've been hiding behind Brexit. Because they see they had the opportunity that the nation's fractured, political parties are fractured, and they see that it's their way now of getting out. And I question to Richard, what's your view 
on these people who stood on, forget about the Tories, it's just a good, well, not say good, but forget that for the moment. They're the party people who stood on that policy, the manifesto, which I believe the best manifesto in my lifetime. Now anybody, anybody can vote against that policy, that manifesto, and raise that. And now these same people have walked away from that. For, for a person, Chucker, or whatever his name is, to, to come out and say, do what they live with, what about the 27th House majority? Yeah. The people who voted in his constituency for him. Yeah. Why say to these people, if you're so convinced that you're right and everyone else is wrong, why do you stand for this reselection and the by election? Yeah. Put your money where your mouth is. But they won't put the money where the mouth is because they know they're not going to get elected because they're not, a, they're not a, at this present time a political party. Come out these great statements, and they know that they're all fractured. Come in earlier, it's because of sheer frustration. Mm. Now, what people have got to remember is that people like Richard are not in power. Mm. We are unfortunately in the minority, and these people defect, defecting away from us, <coughs> making going to make it job harder for the party. We're seeing now we've got we now less people, and it seems to be on a weekly basis, but it's drip, drip, drip feeding from the Labour Party, of people who are leaving Frank Fields of this world, who are now independents, who will not stand for a by-election. And whether they agree with Jeremy or not is another matter. The point being is, democracy rules, as somebody said. Mm. The majority of Labour Party members, mm. not just voting for him once, but voting for him twice. I believe they should be standing in by-election, and I'd just like to know you yes, do okay. that. Dave. I make the point, these people who have left the Labour Party were elected to be Labour MPs on a Labour manifesto. I'm not arrogant enough to think that the reason I represent East Leeds uh, in Parliament is because I'm Richard Bergen. Most people didn't vote for me because I'm Richard Bergen. Most people voted for me because I'm a Labour candidate. And that's the same for every single Labour candidate. On that basis, given they've left the Labour Party, given Chukramuna said on TV this morning he doesn't want a Labour government, he, has, he doesn't have the permission really of his voters, of his community, to carry on representing them in Parliament. So there should be by-elections, it's anti-democratic, it's not new politics to refuse to have a by-election. They should ask for the permission of the people in their local community to continue to represent them on this new basis, because it is a fundamentally new basis. And I know Dave's got to go for the training this segment, I just want to say I agree with the thrust of his arguments uh, on uh, Brexit, obviously Labour's under new management now, and the kind of things that we actually opposed as Labour members and as a movement in the past that Labour did in relation to marketisation and privatisation, we're under new management now and we have a different, uh, we had, uh, we have a, uh, a different view. The last comment I'll make on Brexit, it is the case that that austerity occurred whilst we're in the European Union. Privatisation occurred whilst we're in the European Union. That's why the Remain campaign made such a mistake to say things like, don't put your prosperity at risk by voting leave. Most people didn't feel they had any prosperity to put at risk, and therefore it was a bad slogan towards them. But, but leaving the European Union will not solve the problems people face. I believe that we should leave the European Union because the country voted to, but we should leave uh, on the basis of Labour's uh, deal. But that won't solve it, the problems that people are facing. What we need is that fundamental shift that I talked about in wealth, power and control in favour of working people. Because otherwise, like anything, Every historical and political development is used by those at the top in their own interests. The same will be the case for Brexit if we let them get away with it. That's why we can't and won't let them get away with using it for that purpose. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and please share us with your friends on social media. Remember, unity is strength. Thanks for watching.